search of a place to call my new home. Welcome to Canada. I hope you stay strong. If you need a friend, I'll be the one. Keep your smile because a bright day will come. Times may be tough, but there's a shoulder to lean on. People look at me with a big smile on their face. Trying to say my odd name. No matter what culture you come from. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. My name is Natasha and I have with me Carolina and we're from the FCJ Refugee Center. And we just wanna thank you so much for being with us today. And I wanna welcome our esteemed host for today. Jihad Aliwewi is a long, long, long time supporter of our center. He's been a fierce advocate for human rights and for refugee rights. And he has been a fierce advocate and supporter of our center. And he has so graciously agreed to, to be with us today and to take us through our session. So I want to turn it over to Jihad. Thank you so much. And it wouldn't be a Zoom call if we didn't have to remind somebody that they were on mute. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Natasha. And I am privileged to be asked to do this. And hello, everyone. And welcome to the 30th anniversary celebration of FCJ Refugee Center. As you know, the center is marking this milestone during a pandemic that has been truly challenging for all of us, but especially for those who we work with. And for that, we are delighted you could join us. And we begin with an unequivocal statement of solidarity with the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island. Canada's history begin with, begins with the colonization of First Nations land, in which we have built a foundation of false hopes and empty promises to the indigenous people of Canada. While our country mourns together over the ongoing discoveries of the 1,071 remains of indigenous children as young as three in multiple sites of residential schools, we must not forget that anti-Indigenous racism and prejudice is not just in Canada's past. While shocking to some, to the Indigenous people, these are a dramatic reminder of the legacy of colonialism and dispossession. We stand in grief and solidarity with Indigenous people across Turtle Island as they face 
the trauma caused by the church and the Canadian government through residential schools and many other forms of systemic and ongoing racism and discrimination. We acknowledge the impact that colonialism, systemic racism and violence has on indigenous people. Although many in our community have been displaced by similar forces of racism, neo-colonialism, the transatlantic slave trade, the rise of fascist movements and unfettered commercial exploitations in our countries of origin, we recognize that our organization too is not free of racism and pledge to take an active part in decolonization and reconciliation. We recognize how we have profited from Canada's colonialism. And we are at the FCJ Refugee Center would like to acknowledge the land on which its establishment is housed and where support staff, volunteers and members gather. This land is the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the, of the Credit, the Anishinaabe and many, many diverse First Nation people who have been here for thousands of years. We urge the Canadian government to continue to investigate the more than 130 residential school burial sites and bring forward justice to the families and bring these kids home. They must work with indigenous leaders, allow for self-determination and must always prioritize the best interest of children, indigenous children and their communities. We also acknowledge that we are settlers and we stand in solidarity with the indigenous peoples of, of, of Turtle Island. We recognize our role as individuals in the work of reconciliation with indigenous people. We commit to doing the work and to learn more. And we also want to echo the call of indigenous colleagues, friends and activists who say do not celebrate Canada Day on Thursday. Instead, wear orange, an expression of solidarity with indigenous people, but also a reminder of the trauma and the atrocities that so many innocent children have faced for nothing that they have done. Thank you. And now we begin with the voices of the FCJ Refugee Center. And I am delighted and honored to introduce Loli Rico, the co-director to provide us background and overview of the center. But I wanted to say that Loli, along with her life partner, Francisco, built a formidable institution of influence, inclusion, and belonging. They have created a space where people on the margin of society felt connected and included. They have been an elegant voice for the most vulnerable amongst us. Both are remarkable pioneers, and we are privileged to work and walk along, alongside with these two giants. With that, I introduce you to Loli. Welcome to the FCJ Refugee Center 30 anniversary. On behalf of the co-directors, Loli Rico, myself, and Francisco Rico Martinez, and all the staff of the FCJ Refugee Center, we want to give you a big and warm welcome. We hope that this is, will be a, this is our first event of many events, and we hope that this is, will be one of the last events that we will do it virtually. May, hopefully, soon we can have a, a live and we can give you a hug and we give you a welcome. In the last 30 years, we have been walking with Apruri people, and we have been not just walking, we have been going with them to their refugee hearings, going to them to their 
immigration appointments, helping them to get a safe place, get to them to have a party, get to them that they can know what is Canada or what is the places outside the city of Toronto. But also we have been given a shoulder when we need to cry together. Also, we are in this year, especially with the pandemic, we not just walk with them. We have been opening our kitchen to their kitchen, our table, we have been sharing our table. And with that also, we have been trying to give a little bit to be easy their life during this time. We will talk about not just what we have been done, but also we will talk about what we are going to do. But also this is a time for reflection. In this time, especially that is a situation in, in Canada, in, we need to be in solidarity with our indigenous people, especially us as a refugees or former refugees or immigrants, where many of us, we have been fleeing our country because we have been displaced from our land because we have been indigenous. We, why we are also, we are displaced of the land because we have been fighting for the rights because we are indigenous from all uh, around the world. And in that we understand what is happening when you miss a family, when you have a missing person, when you don't know where are your family. And with this, we want as a FCJ Refugee Center to be in solidarity with our indigenous people of Canada as many other indigenous that they have been suffering with the colonization, with the wrongdoing in the colonization. We want to say with this, I want to really uh, open this time and our 30th anniversary with a lot of hope and with a lot of reflection. Especially, for example, we invite you to Canada Day, not celebrate Canada Day. This is a time to reflect what Canada has been done and how we can move forward and to forgive. It's a time where we talk the truth and we say we start the reconciliation. It's a time that we need to review as immigrants all the treaties because we are in the land of treaties and it's our obligation. It's a time to read what is the reconciliation uh, and the truth reconciliation report as well the report for the missing murdered woman, that we need to read that in a way that we can learn and not to support any other force for indigenous people, like a human trafficking, like a, the forced removal of the parents and to go to foster homes. How we can be in solidarity with them is a time for reflection on how we can ask for actions. Actions that, for example, we we need to be in the curriculum for education to tell the truth about the indigenous people, to tell the truth about who are these laborers, to tell the truth who build the residential schools. With telling the truth, that's when we start moving forward. In this occasion, I just want to say welcome, and I will pass it to our MC, Jiha, and all our staff, that we can continue with our program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lodi, for these powerful, typical words of yours. Thank you for building a center of excellence and a destination for reliable resources and expert opinions on refugees. Thank you for building a piazza, a public square for celebrating the success, achievements, and resilience of refugees, uprooted people, and non-status people. Notable by his absence, that powerful yet gentle, kind voice of Francisco. Francisco is a hero and a remarkable mentor to many of us. He is taking time off to take care of his health. He's fighting, and we know he will fight this with the resolve and grace that he has shown for so many years. On behalf of all of us, we wish you a speedy and full recovery. And we truly look forward to celebrating with you again soon. Get well, my friend, all of us, sending you lots of love, kisses and hugs, and you are with our, in our prayers and thoughts. Thank you. And now 
I would like to welcome the FCJ Refugee Center Board Chair, Susan Donhue, to share a few words with us. And just a note that the meeting, and I should have said this at the beginning, is being recorded. So if you have an issue, and I hope you don't, just turn your camera off. Thank you. And please mute when you're not speaking and unmute when you are. Thank you, Jihad. And I'm just thrilled to be with you today. A very, very special moment for all of us FCJs and for certainly all who have been part of the FCJ Refugee Center. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. So I see from the archives that when the FCJ Refugee Center marked the 10th anniversary, Mary Rose Rollinson was the FCJ Provincial at that time. And she said, this was 20 years ago now, today we are celebrating a journey, a journey of hope. It is a journey marked by faith and faithfulness, a journey sustained by friendship and companionship. It is a journey we celebrate today with great gratitude. Today, as we launch the 30th anniversary of the FCJ Refugee Center, I could offer the same words of encouragement. Natasha asked me to offer a few thoughts about the FCJ commitment to the center, the impact of our relationship, not only for the FCJ sisters, but also companions in mission and our dedicated board members. And as I reflected on the work of the century over the past 30 years, I also took a, an opportunity to look at our recent general chapter calls. The general chapter took place in 2019. And in one sense, I was just delighted to say the center is living daily in a very real way, one of these precious calls of the FCJs. And that is compassionate action, widening, our circle of love, compassionate action, widening the circle of our love. The center continues to widen the circle of love by embracing all people, especially those who experience exclusion, exploitation, and injustice. In particular, it offers our compassionate action to migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, trafficked people, and the economically disadvantaged, vulnerable women and children, and so many more. All of this is neatly summed up in the center's mission, walking with uprooted peoples. The center is certainly a door of hope for so many with its open door policy and its greeting, all are welcome. Even during the pandemic, the center was determined to be an open door in a global lockdown. Today, the FCJ sisters, companions in mission, and our board members are deeply grateful. First of all, and especially to Loli and Francisco, who began this journey 30 years ago and have made their home at the heart of the project. To the FCJ sisters the, and the board members who have accompanied you and offered their wisdom and inspiration. To the women and children who have found their home with you for a while, just for a while, and shared their journey with all. And to all who have been clients of this project and enriched us with their stories and their hope. We are grateful to the donors, large and small, who have made the journey possible. To the volunteers who have added their expertise, generosity, and faithfulness. To all the dedicated members of the board over the years. To the staff and all those people and organizations that have collaborated with us. And especially, I would like to thank religious men and women of other congregations, 
who have supported us throughout those years. We are grateful to God, whose constant invitation invites us to follow in companionship, in faith, and in hope. We are grateful to God, whose faithfulness to us and through us is always greater than we could hope for. May God bless each one as we walk together into the future, widening the circle of love by offering compassionate action to all without exception. So congratulations and thank you. I am just so thrilled to be part of this venture. Thank you very much, Susan, for those inspiring words. I know I've had the privilege of serving on the board for, for a number of years, and I was constantly in awe of the commitment, the passion and dedication that the sisters bring to the deliberation of the board, the absolute pleasure that they take in the work they do. With that, we are pleased to introduce a video with a message of the work of the FCJ, FCJ Refugee Center uh, from some of the FCJ sisters who have supported the important work over the years. My name is Cornelia and I had the joy of being a volunteer for some time to the FCJ Refugee Center. I remember very well the beautiful yellow poster with the powerful words, My door is open. I discovered that the door of the house, the door of the center, was indeed open to everybody. And not just that. Everybody's heart working in the center was open. Their life's door was open. I would like to say a big thank you to all those who knew how to keep the door open in so many different ways during that time. And at the same time, I'd like to ask a um, blessing on those who will continue to keep the door open into the future. Hello, I'm Sister Michelle with the Faithful Companions of Jesus here in Edmonton, Alberta. My first memories of being at the Refugee Center are way back in 2013, uh, and they include receiving a very warm welcome from Francisco and Lolly, and I just remember there being a lovely sense of energy in the building. The classes that I was involved in started out in this kind of corner of the basement with a table and, and nothing else. And then uh, as the weeks passed, it evolved. You know, there, there was a dedicated classroom and, you know, like teaching materials. I received a wonderful education at the center because the students that came, like I said, they were from all over the world and it was wonderful to get to know a little bit about their lives and about the places that they came from. It was amazing to me and it still is amazing to me how such a, a small building, you know, in the heart of Toronto uh, accomplishes so much for so many people. How there are so many different people from different backgrounds, uh, with different gifts, living in and around Toronto and all of these people are willing to give up their time and their gifts. Uh, to support others, and uh, to me that's, that's really beautiful and miraculous. I'm Sister Anuska, and I first encountered the FCJ Refugee Centre in 2011. What I learned from the centre was generosity. The ability to see people who always gave more than perhaps they thought they were could, more than possible. They taught me in my way to be generous. I remember celebrating the 20th anniversary with them. So it's amazing that we're now at the 30th. It's hard to believe that 10 years has happened in between. I think more than anything, I learned that structures, bureaucracy, don't always fit the people's lives that we meet. And for someone who sometimes likes boxes, that was a real learning. 
I value the companionship, the work, the energy that Loli and Francisco and everybody puts into the centre. I'm glad they work in the name of the society. And perhaps more than anything, I'm delighted that through their experience, so many more people can be helped to reach a positive end, a good experience and find hope in the future. The FCJ Refugee Centre has undergone many changes since 1990. The mission of the Centre has expanded far beyond our expectations and the gifts of Lolly and Francisco have greatly enriched the lives of refugees and others throughout the City of Toronto and beyond. Well, thank you so much for those incredible messages and powerful words. Um, with that, I am very, very happy to welcome and introduce uh, Sister Louis Anne, one of my favorite people of all time, who have been an incredible support over the many years to uh, FCJ uh, Refugee Center to share a message from the FCJ sisters in Calgary. Louis Anne. You're, you're muted, Sister Lois, sorry. <laughs> you would think I had enough experience. Uh, I'm sure everybody now knows what FCJ means uh, because we use it a lot. And just in case you missed it, it's the uh, name of our congregation, Faithful Companions of Jesus. And so the sisters in Calgary so admire the wonderful achievements and efforts that have been made through the last 30 years to welcome new immigrants to Canada, to help with settlement, promoting awareness and preventing human trafficking. Mary Madeline Douay, founders of the FCJ Sisters, would be so impressed to see the FCJ charism expressed so well in 2021. You are certainly a vibrant expression of reaching out to know and answer the needs in our time. We hope you have a great celebration, and our wish for you is in the adapted words of John O'Donoghue. May your work never weary you. May it release within you wellsprings of refreshment, inspiration, and excitement. May you be present in what you do. May you never become lost in the bland absences. May the day never burden you. May dawn find you awake and alert, approaching your new day with dreams, possibilities, and promises. May evening find you gracious and fulfilled. May you go into the night, blessed, sheltered, and protected. May the light of our gracious God come console and renew you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Louis, and uh, those uh, insights that I, I and, and, and prayers that, and, 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 and beautiful messages that you used to read when I was at the board is what I miss most. So thank you for that. Uh, after those wonderful introductions and messages, uh, let's uh, begin walking through the last 30 years uh, that uh, FCJ Refugee Center has been working uh, so hard in building a center for all to belong and to get uh, support. I'd like to welcome back uh, my friend Loli to share some of those uh, milestones and uh, the beginnings of FCJ Refugee Center and its work in the community. Loli. Thirty years ago, we start in a house with a family and two bedrooms welcoming women and children. We start where we realized that many refugees were coming as a government assisted refugee with privilege to a place that was focused on refugees, to a place that you can have and you can sleep and feel safe, and then to start a new life. But then there is other type of refugees that they were showing up at the border. 
and they were the ones that didn't have any of that privilege. They were looking in the different cities and end up in shelters where they were not understanding about what is the situation and how they are having their problems and what is refugees. What we decide is to open the house, the family refugee with or for women and children. In these two bedrooms, we welcome many women that they have been fleeing persecution, gender persecution, refugees that they have been walking or using different forms to come to Canada on their own. Many of them, they have been leaving their children back home and with all the sadness, or many of them, they were coming with their baby in their tummy. We're looking for a hope. These women, we were helping them to not just to have a place to sleep, to feel safe. We were helping them to integrate, to have access to school, to have access to programs where they can feel confident, where they can focus on their case, where they can be successful in Canada. These women, they have been also having, given the opportunity to visit other places. We were doing traveling, we were plans, programs to go and enjoy. It's not just work or to the sadness of their story. We were also helping them and accompany them to the refugee hearings. That's why, how we start. Now we have more houses and now our programs have been expanding. To talk about what we are doing right now and what we will do in the future, I want to pass it to my colleague, Sirin Lamo, who is the Women's Program Coordinator. Sirin? My name is Sirin. I'm the Housing and the Women's Program Coordinator at FCG Refugee Center. For the last 30 years, we have opened our doors to refugee and migrant women and children from around the world. The Transitional Housing and the Women Program is the core of our organization. We not only support women and children with the integration process, we welcome them and provide sense of community and belonging that they left behind. We provide weekly food hampers through our food program and it gives us as a worker an opportunity to have a regular interaction with our residents in the houses. Moreover, we organize monthly meetings and a weekly women's workshop that allow the residents to connect with one another. Thank you. Is that a cue for me? I guess. Thank you, uh, Loli, and thank you, Searing, for, for that. Uh, uh, we are very proud to share that in the last two years, we have had 66 women and 10 children under 10 living in our three houses. Since the pandemic began, we have supported 14 women in finding permanent safe housing. We welcome women from all over the world and women in our networks now are from Mexico, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, El Salvador, Hungary, and India, and many other places. Uh, one of the landmark values of FCJ Refugee Center is, uh, is that, it pro that the programs we offer are informed and led by the community directly. It's what the community needs. It's responsive. It's not what we like. It is led, inspired, designed, and 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 it really is what the community and, and, and the, especially the women are looking for. An initiative which began as one which provides food security to women and children in our three houses has grown to uh, one which now provides weekly food security to more than 2,000 individuals living across Toronto. Incredible work. And I think uh, FCJ Refugee Center staff team should uh, take a bow for this. We are all inspired by the work we do. You know, providing 2,000 people for, with food security in this time is an incredible achievement. So well done and congratulations. Uh, this uh, brings us also to the impact beyond that we are having today. As many of you should know, FCJ Refugee Center has an incredible range of programming, ensuring that holistic support are provided to the most vulnerable. Programs 
uh, ranging from immigration and settlement support, anti-human trafficking, public education, access to education, and more. Today, we are proud to highlight the achievement of one program that has been so integral, especially in this last year. That is the primary care clinic and the program provide, providing health support to precarious migrants. I'd like to share some statistics with you about the incredible work of this program. Last year alone, the center supported more than 515 people access primary health care with 170 patients supported through the mental health care clinic. These are incredible numbers. Fighting COVID-19 at the FCJ, the refugee center. Since March, 2021, we have provided vaccination to 672 people through clinics held in our office. And I've seen that in action. We have supported 500 and almost 550 Torontonians to access vaccine booking through partner community clinics where they have safe uh, form, uh, where they were safe from discrimination based on immigration status and availability of health cards and coverage. With the support of the city of Toronto and with our community partners, we have supported more than six thousand Torontonians who do not have OHIP to access and book appointments for the COVID-19 vaccine. This is an incredible service to the community. All of this work would not have been possible without the leadership and dedication of our primary care clinic coordinator, Eli, Eli who will join us to share a little bit uh, about her work, incredible journey uh, with our center and our community. Welcome. Ellie, sorry if I mispronounce your name. I present you with Ellie. Hi, Jiha. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, well, I'm going to read some words. FCJ has been the family that cannot be close to me now. When someone migrates for a better future, for a better lives, leaves many things behind, and among all that, our family. So when I came to FCJ as a volunteer, I did not find only opportunities to learn, to focus my energy on more long knowledge and skills that I didn't even know that I had. But beyond that, I found a new family and friends with whom I have felt identified, but at the same time, respected. And that was one of the many things that I came to look for here. Respect and value for myself and for what I do. Thanks to FCJ, I learned that what I truly means to support without any conditions. Living day by day, doing something different and helping big time. Now I have realized that by helping others, I have helped myself to heal. I'm not ungrateful to FCJ for now having me as a part of the staff, for working with all of us together and for being the family and the heal that so many of us need and yearn to be a place closer to home, even if it's closer to the North Pole. Thank you, Lolly. Thank you, Francisco. And thank you, FCJ. And thank you for that beautiful message, Ellie. We, you are an impact in action. We also have a wonderful video that two of our team members, Carolina and Miguel, have put together to showcase our work in response to the pandemic and ensuring that all people, regardless of immigration status, have access to health, safety, and protection. Hey, uh, Refugee Center community, my name is Elisa. I am the coordinator of the primary care clinic. And today we are having the mobile vaccination clinic for people who doesn't have OHIP people, which is in a vulnerable situation. We are helping them to have their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Today we had a team of doctors uh, providing for the vaccine to all of them. And we're gonna have probably more vaccination clinics in, in our office, in our center. And please just be aware of our social media and our website. The information is gonna be there. 
and also we are helping uh, and working in partnership with the city of Toronto in order to help people to try to get their appointments for the vaccine around the clinics on the area of the city and we are partnership also with another hospitals and immunization clinics around the area of Toronto so feel free to reach us. The, the best way to uh, contact us to get an appointment is sending an email to vaccine at fcjrefugeecenter.org. You can send your information there or you can also send your information through our website. Hi, hola, how are you? My name is Vanessa. I'm a nurse practitioner. I'm with Women's College Hospital. I work with the Crossroads Refugee Clinic and we're giving a COVID vaccine today and we're going to come back again and it's a wonderful network and a wonderful organization to work for. I'm so grateful and we have wonderful colleagues that we work with and um, we bring a team of about three to four to five people depending on the numbers of people to, to vaccinate and uh, the sun is shining, it's a beautiful day. Today we did 61 doses but in the past, the last clinic two weeks ago, we did 200. Uh, week by week, we are looking at the needs and we're coming and giving the vaccine as, as needed. Hi, my name is Natasha and I work here at the FCJ Refugee Centre. We help folks with a lot of different things, but right now one of our focuses is on helping to make sure that everybody gets equitable access to the vaccine. And what we're looking at here is making sure that everyone who does not have access to OHIP and so this may be non-status folks, it may be refugee claimants, international students, visitors, whomever they may be who are living in Toronto, you do have access to the vaccine and you're able to get vaccinated for free at any of the clinics. We have a few different ways that we're doing this and we're in partnership with the City of Toronto and we have a lot of community partners helping us like Access Alliance. And if you give us a call or you send us an email and the contacts will be below, we'll help you to generate a unique ID so you can make a booking on one of the provincial booking sites, or we have a lot of other clinic options throughout the city. There are lots of pop-up clinics. We just finished one here today. There's an option of registering through Baycrest Hospital, Sunnybrook Hospital. We have a lot of options to support you. So we want to thank our partners at the City of Toronto for making this possible. And we wanna just invite you to get in contact with us to get vaccinated. Thank you. Thank you. What, a, what an incredible demonstration of the impact that the center is, is having on the recovery and helping us, hopefully, all of us to emerge from this pandemic. So thank you for the, the amazing work. Uh, and of course, we can't acknowledge all we have done without saying a huge thank you to all of those who have supported uh, the center. Uh, and one of those supporters, uh, we're happy to have with us the Member of Parliament for Davenport, which uh, FCJ's uh, Oakwood uh, house is uh, located and where uh, my, my house is, so she's my <laughs> Member of Parliament. Uh, Julie Dorich, we are very happy to have you here and uh, the floor is yours to say a few words. Oh, thank you very much. That's me coming to, uh, by the clinic last Friday. <laughs> uh, me with my head sort of on the top of my head. My hair is so long that I, I have to sort of uh, put it up all the time now because I'm unable to get a haircut. Anyways, thank you so much for welcoming me today. It's a real pleasure for me to be here on the uh, 30th anniversary of FCJ. And to be honest, until today, I didn't know that FCJ meant faithful companions of Jesus. So thank you, Lois, <laughs> for, for educating me on that. So thank you. Um, hello to the whole community. It's really uh, uh, wonderful for me to be here with the uh, the board members, uh, with our board chair, uh, Susan Donahue, with uh, amazing staff, uh, with leaders, uh, Loli and Rico. And I know um, uh, Loli, I'm sorry, Francisco. Uh, Francisco isn't with us, and I didn't realize that he was not well. So I'm hoping that whoever's in touch with him lets him know that he's uh, in my prayers and in my thoughts. And I, and I only hope for a speedy recovery uh, for him. 
Um, uh, for those that uh, know me, uh, I come every year uh, to the uh, to the uh, annual sort of anniversary. Usually, there's amazing food and music, and I usually see a lot of the youth and the clients in the local community. And I really love coming out, and I really miss it. So I'm really hoping that next year we'll return to much new normal uh, that we'll be able to sort of be outside again, and I'll be able to see everyone in person. For those that don't know, um, FCJ uh, Refugee House uh, was my uh, aunt, uh, my aunt's house, my great aunt's house. So for many years, I used to come for family dinners many times a year, and it was a house full of love. And I think that love has stayed in the house because it continues to be there as FCJ uh, offers all these unbelievable programs uh, for uh, the refugee and immigrant community and those with non-status. Um, so I, I want to just mention a few things that I've been super impressed um, with. I mean, not that I haven't been impressed with everything that FCJ has done. Uh, I, I will tell you, we even refer some people who are refugees who need some additional help to FCJ. Uh, and so I'm so grateful that they're in the community. I'm really, really, um, I'm really proud of the work uh, that FCJ is doing around um, human trafficking, uh, and basically developing and implementing intervention practices uh, that will provide, um, that will advance knowledge and enhance empowerment supports for at-risk populations and survivors of human trafficking in Toronto. That was a $400,000 investment from the federal government. And it made me really proud that we had a group within the Davenport Riding that was leading uh, on this uh, within not only our community, but within Canada. Uh, all the food security work, um, all the work around and championing and advocating for non-status um, citizens who not only workers, but youth were in our society. And I was really happy to see that. And I did pop by um, late last week on Friday uh, to, uh, to the fifth vaccine clinic that FCJ was actually hosting. So I just want to say heartfelt thanks to FCJ for everything that they do. Um, I'm the daughter of uh, immigrant parents. Uh, my mother is uh, Mexican. Uh, my father, uh, Ukrainian, he was part of the displaced persons camp in Europe and came over with his grandparents. And so they were, you know, both of them immigrated to this country because they were looking for a better life. And so I have a very big heart for, for immigrants and refugees to this country. Um, it's one of the key reasons I ran for office uh, to, to be part of a team that believes that in Canada, diversity is our strength. And it doesn't matter what your background is, what your religion is, where you come from, uh, you are equal in this country and you should have an equal opportunity to succeed. Um, I'm really proud also of a, a number of things that we've done over the last few years. And I think we have a lot more work to do, but I know that uh, when we came into office, we did restore the healthcare for refugees. I know that um, we also uh, cleared the backlog of the 6,000 uh, refugees that were in limbo before 2012. And there was a lot of other work we did, particularly to increase the numbers of refugees and immigrants coming to Canada. And just for those that don't know, I'm a big advocate for a million <laughs> uh, new uh, immigrants every year to Canada. I think our economy uh, can handle it and would benefit from it. And I, I think that our country is better because of uh, the new Canadians that come to our country. Um, I think maybe I'll just uh, end off uh, by saying a big thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you for gathering every single year. I really appreciated the slides and the videos today. It gave me a much broader depth and breadth of the work. And also it's nice to see the faces, even though they're masks, and it's nice to see people. And it's nice to sort of be reminded about all the wide variety of programs and all the people that actually deliver it. So to all the sisters, the FCJ sisters who are here, all the board members, the leaders, you know, Francisco and, um, and Loli, to all the unbelievable staff um, and all the volunteers and everyone that makes FCJ a special place in our city. And uh, I thank you and I wish you many more years uh, in, our, in our community and many more years of, of success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Julia, for, for these uh, words and for your ongoing support of, of the community and, and the center. Um, FCJ uh, Refugee Center is so lucky to welcome the support of so many incredible community members and leaders. We, all, we are also thrilled to share a message of congratulations from Deputy Mayor Anna Bailao, a longtime supporter of, of the center. 
and uh, someone who has always uh, shared uh, the celebration with us at our famous street parties. A message, are, are you reading Natasha or someone the message from uh, Hannah Baila or? I think that we're gonna have a message forthcoming and so we'll be sure to circulate that on our okay. social media channels. Thank you Great. so much. Thank you, Deputy Mayor for that. Uh, I know some of our team also wanted to share a special thank you to some of those who provided invaluable resources uh, to allow the incredible work to happen. We, are hope we were hoping uh, to welcome uh, Associate Director Diana to share a few words, uh, but I understand that she's out of the country and unfortunately she's not able to join us. So Natasha, the uh, ever-present uh, Natasha, is going to share a brief message of thanks to, to the community and to all of us. Natasha, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Jihad. And to everybody who's here today, thank you so much. I think that we can absolutely agree that this center does not lack in passion and in action and in activism. Um, and we are such a stronger community because of each one of us playing a part. And we're so, so grateful for that support. But of course, we also recognize that all of that passion isn't enough if we don't have the resources to be able to fulfill this work. And so even the funding that was just referenced about the human trafficking, that's been such, that's been so foundational for our organization and we're so, so grateful for that. Um, I think that we also want to, to pay special attention to our funders who've been bold and have had such a vision to support particularly precarious migrants and folks who don't necessarily have a pathway through other things. And we're so, so grateful for all of our supporting partners the City of Toronto in this last year has really stepped up to the plate to make sure that those who are particularly vulnerable because of the pandemic are provided with support. And something that I know Lily and Francisco have been fighting for for generations now, for decades now, is actual financial security support. And we're so proud that that's something that we've been able to offer in recent months. And that's a COVID emergency relief fund. And so all of these things support from the Law Foundation, from our different academic partners who are advancing research on precarious migrants and on the migrant population. We couldn't do this work without all of their support, without all of your support. And so a huge, huge thank you to everybody who's played a part in this relationship over 30 years, whether you've been with us from the beginning or you're newer to us, um, everybody here is so, so special. So I wanna say a, a huge thank you to each of you for being here today. Thank you, Jihad. Well, thank you, uh, Natasha, for this wonderful message. And uh, don't go too far. I think uh, we will continue to walk forward. And let's take a look uh, towards uh, the future. I'd like to welcome you back again, Natasha, to share a few words about how youth and children are at the heart of the center and the different programs that have been built for uh, for the, the, the incredible community that, that you support. So, Natasha. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you again, Jihad. And so I know that long before I came here, youth were at the core and the heart of this organization. And it's been something that Loli and Francisco and all of the staff have made sure that even this room that Carolina and I are in right now, you can see a mural behind us, which was created by the youth a few years ago. Um, this room that we're in right now has always been the space for youth. And so we're, we're not able to welcome people in person right now, but we have an incredible, incredible youth team. I know that Natalie and Kalisha are on the call here and they've been doing just phenomenal work, making sure that not one day has gone by just the way that the, the door has stayed open, their phones have stayed open and the Zooms have stayed open to make sure that that support is being provided. The Youth Network was founded in 2012. So we're, we're approaching a landmark year ourselves for that work. And we're just so proud to have had incredible support for that community, but we've also seen in this last year, them giving that support back to us. Youth have been leading the charge for our food security initiative and for so many of the programs that we've been doing. And it's actually the area in the office where we've been able to develop new programs in this time. And so we've established 17 new English classes, English beginner and conversation classes. We've established brand new child minding under our uprooted junior program, providing French classes, English classes, music classes, art classes, Uprooted You, a program for students who are trying to take some post-secondary education classes. We've had incredible programs for youth, but um, I, I don't want to be the one speaking about this. I wanna bring somebody who's been a part of the foundation of the Youth Network, who has been one of our youth workers at the center, who has been an absolute pillar with our Youth Network community. And that's my very, very dear friend, Dennis. And I know he's here to, to share a few words with all of you today. So welcome, Dennis. 
Uh, hi everyone, my name is Dennis. Uh, I'm struggling here to make my video work, um, but just bear with me. Uh, hope everyone can hear me. I'll start with the story of uh, yesterday when I was having a walk at night, I saw a small raccoon by the dam and the raccoon was, once it, it saw me, it, it became terrified and, and rigid. It was afraid of what would happen, what would I do to it, but on the other side of the road, uh, the family was waiting for it and it rushed to it, to the family and it was received by the family and they walked away in peace. That reminded me of when I came to Canada as a young, I would say a young boy, uh, not knowing what to do, uh, having a heavy mental health yoke on my shoulders, uh, culture shock hit me, uh, an intrigue, uh, an intricate uh, system to navigate, but Lori and um, Francisco and the FCJ were there to help me navigate the system, show me what to do. Um, I started by volunteering with them. And uh, as, I as I started uh, applying for jobs and every year was asking me for a Canadian experience, they were like, don't worry, we got you. And um, having the experience of being a volunteer there, they offered me an opportunity to work as a youth worker where I started my base on working with youth. I became more involved and um, we, we help build more programs that can, are more welcoming. And I really appreciate the FCJ for offering us a safe space uh, where we can come, uh, express ourselves freely, uh, not worry about being judged, uh, not, worry about, not worrying about who is sitting next to me, uh, what are they thinking about me? And overall offering a uh, family uh, for most of us who come into the country alone without anyone to lean on uh, to show us what to do. And with that, on behalf of all the youth who have been through FCJ, I really appreciate. And um, since 2012 and uh, all the 30 years since 1990, um, I really appreciate whatever FCJ is doing, and I believe um, we as the youth, we are the leaders who are going to be carrying on with, to, with the vision for tomorrow. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dennis, for this um, and sharing the, your, your beautiful message with us. And to showcase one of those programs, uh, we were just discussing, we have an incredible video, so uh, showing the impact and the collective effort of the child finding, uh, child minding program. So Caroline, Carolina, I think you're taking us through this. And I just wanted to take a very, very brief moment. I know that everybody's very busy and I know that our illustrious Jihad is also very, very busy. And I think he has another meeting he has to sneak out to at five o'clock. And so before I start that meeting, I just want to give an enormous, enormous thank you for leading us through this session today. Um, if we can all give Jihad a big round of applause, it's just been an mm -hmm. honor to have you with us. You've been a long-standing supporter. I know that you have the love and support of Loli and Francisco and everyone here. So a very, very big thank you to you, Jihad. Thank you so much for including me in this incredible celebration. And I truly apologize, but I have to, to be part of a, a meeting in a few minutes. Uh, congratulations. I am inspired. I'm a big fan. And uh, I will always be part of the work of FCJ uh, Center. And uh, Loli and Francisco both are heroes of mine. I've probably known them most of the last 30 years and they have inspired me in every step and I look forward to hugging both of them very soon. And Natasha, thank you for shepherding us through this and for all the work that you have done. Happy 30th anniversary and I look forward to the next 30 years and beyond. and today I'm going to give you a quick view of our child mining program. So this program is designed, designed for kids 5 to 12 years old and in this program the kids can learn what they play, they can learn some craft, they can learn some dancing, they also will learn uh, how to draw, they will learn some French and also they will have music class. 
so happy to have you with us in the program welcome hi guys my name is Renika I'm a part of the child money team and I teach the kids art and crafts we do drawing painting and learn all types of new techniques and the main goal is to have fun Bonjour, my name is Eva and I am part of FCJ volunteer team supporting by giving French classes on Tuesday and Thursday. The level is basic for children and we play and we learn the basics of grammar and pronunciation. So that's what I do. Merci. Hello, my name is Kunle. I'm a music producer, singer-songwriter, entrepreneur, and a music educator. My role at the FCJ Refugee Center in Toronto is as a music instructor, and it's been a fun journey so far. Middle finger, finger two. Ring finger, finger three. Baby finger, finger four. Some people call it the pinky. Thank you so much for that beautiful video. Honestly, that that just, it, it inspires me so much. I know we have some of our partners here. I see Melina is here with us. She has been the pillar. I hope everybody can see her. She's waving. She has been, and I don't know what we would have done without her this year. She has helped to coordinate, and I see John sneaking out of you, but I, she has been the one to coordinate all 17 of those English classes that I was talking about, she coordinates the teachers for them. She coordinates the beginner classes, the, um, oh, she's, look, she's got a screen grab of, of, of the class. Isn't that beautiful? Um, and she's been kind of leading our child minding program. And she's just been an absolute, absolute hero in these last few months. So she's, she's one of a, she's one of a team, but she's been an absolute, absolute treasure. And we're so grateful to every member of our team, but we're so proud to highlight that program. And we're so thrilled to see it flourish and grow. And we can't see, can't wait to see where it's going to go next. Right now, we actually wanted to open the floor to all of you. I know that so many of you have had relationships with the center beyond, beyond our time here. And so we just wanted to give an opportunity to anybody who wants to share a memory or an anecdote or just a, a, special, a special comment. So I would encourage everybody to, to share if they, if they so choose. So please feel free to unmute yourselves if you wanted to share something. And of course, we also we will we'll always have time for if ever anybody wants to share something but wants to do it via email, um, our contacts are available. I heard somebody just click off mute. Hi. Hi. Yeah, my name is Clara, and I just wanted to share something because I came through the um, FCG Refugee Center, and that was in 2006. So, and uh, that was the time I, I came through Sister Louis Anne, and then I moved uh, through to the house. Uh, so I lived at the FCJ house and um, it was a pleasure. And right now, um, because of that, the background that I have through them, I have now flourished into uh, being on my on my own and uh, doing my own things and I do appreciate I appreciate my beginnings because that is what shaped me I got my experience also volunteering at the FCJ refugee center and we had a blast and I really really appreciate um, just just them being there because sometimes when you come into this country and you're like oh my gosh where do I start from so we got direction from them. So I, I, 
I, I just wanted to say something because I didn't want to just, you know, be quiet and just see this go uh, without me mentioning something. But I do miss also just being there and um, the celebrations and the food and Francisco cooking and doing all sorts. I miss all that. But uh, hopefully next year, we're praying that uh, this uh, COVID business is done, hopefully, and we can all meet again and just be one big happy family. Thank you. Again, my name is Clara. Thank you, Clara. That was absolutely, I, I, we couldn't have asked for somebody to share a more beautiful anecdote. So thank you so much. I can thank guarantee you. there will be no party greater and there will be no yeah. more hugs ever than the first FCJ in-person party that we have. So for sure. <laughs> to hear how well you're doing well done thank you so much so one of the things that as we're going forward one of the things that we just wanted to share with you is that this is as so many people have mentioned this is the first event of many we're looking forward to as the year progresses we will have events to mark every month to mark this entire beautiful year of our of our 30 years in existence so we'll be every year, as you've seen, we've, we've really highlighted the child minding program, but every month going forward, we're going to release a video on one of the areas of the office and be able to organize podcasts and webinars and workshops, um, community education forums and different platforms to be able to really celebrate the, the diversity and the breadth of services and support available here at the FCJ Refugee Center. So please keep tuned to all of those. They'll be posted on our website. I know Carolina will put everything on all of our social media channels. And so please stay tuned. There are, there are many, many more programs to come and we look forward to sharing them with you. So if you want to participate, you're welcome to send me an email and we can record a video or an audio for a podcast. We have a, we have a final message from our, our beautiful Loli to say thank you. We hope that you enjoy all our program and the videos and especially with the child mining program that is so grateful and give you like a lot of hope and uh, <laughs> happiness to see with the playing the ukulele. And, um, and this is, as we said, this is not the last one. This is the first one. And with that, we wanna say thank you for being with us, to stay with us for this hour. We know that this at the end of the day and keep in tune and keep in tune with our in our social media and our website because you will see we will have podcasts we will have videos where we will be presenting each one of our programs that you see it in our house and they are named with all the programs that we have now in our 30th anniversary we start with a small house and now we are a big house where always we keep our door open. Thank you and have a nice day. So there's one final, and I think I'm gonna stop sharing just for this one, one final part. Um, there's, there are two people that we cannot leave this meeting without thanking. And those are of course, Francisco and Loli. None of us would be here today if it were not for them. They have devoted their lives, they have devoted their careers, they have given of their heart and their soul every single day to this place. And, and it, none, of us, none of us would know each other, none of us would, Carlo would not have been here, none of us, Clara, I, might, I apologize, we would not have these connections and this beautiful place would not be what it was were it not for them. So we have a very small favor to ask all of you. And that is if everybody, if anybody's comfortable to turn on their camera, but if you can turn on your microphones, so take yourselves off of mute, and we just want to do a very, very big round of applause for Francisco and Lily. And the, we have one final, final treat to share with all of you. Oh, there's Aaron giving our final wave. There's Aaron. <laughs> and we have one, one final treat to share with all of you as we say goodbye to this first celebration, again, not the last, the first celebration of this 30th year.
And final on this, on this terrible, terrible, terribly, I think we all need a tiny bit of sunshine. You never know how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. And a big thank you to everybody for joining us today. That's the end of our celebration today. Thank you so much. Feel free to be in touch with us if you want to be a part of any of our programs. But thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will see you again very, very soon.